So I want to submit to you this morning a 24-hour Sabbath plan, all right? Because that's, that's what a Sabbath is. It's a, it's a 24-hour period uh, to Sabbath. So I, I, I'm not going to go too deep into it because we're going to get out here in the next like six or seven minutes. But I did want to give you four quick things to do on your Sabbath Sunday. So uh, if we can go ahead and put those up and I'll kind of take us through. Um, and th- these are from, there's, a, there's an author. He's, uh, he, he's, he's a pastor. Um, his name is John Mark Comer. We, uh, he wrote a book called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry that I read years and years ago um, that really, really impacted my life. Um, And we actually did a series on it called Selah way back in 2020, all about rest and learning how to not go so fast. And then the world shut down. Um, And so that was kind of perfect timing. Um, And so a a lot of the the stuff I pulled that I want to share with you, I got um, from from reading some of his stuff and listening to it. So uh, again, it's a 24-hour Sabbath Plan. I encourage you to start because here's the thing. We're taking next Sunday services off. Going to church is not violating the Sabbath. It is actually a part of it. Uh, and so we're, what, we're, what we're not saying is, hey, church is, is hard now, so we're just going to take a week off because we're tired. Uh, that is not what we're saying. What this is, is an intentional moment to teach us all the routine, the practice, and the benefits of what it's like to Sabbath regularly. Uh, next Sunday, you'll, be, you'll have the opportunity to worship and enjoy God in, in, a, in, a, in, in maybe a different way than you normally would on a Sunday morning. Um, and so a 24-hour, I would encourage you to start on Saturday night and Sunday night because we're, we, we wanted to carve this time out for us all to give it a shot together and see how it goes. Um, but the four things that we want to focus on and that I encourage us to focus on for Sabbath Sunday, number one is stop. In the name of love, stop. Just take a beat. <sighs> the word Sabbath means to stop. In Genesis, we see God worked for six days, but then rested on the seventh. And in doing so, he built a rhythm into the fabric of creation. He worked for six days, then he stopped. When we live in alignment with, with this rhythm, with really this ancient rhythm, we find peace we find joy, but when we fight it, often we, we find that our soul gets fractured bit by bit. When we refuse to ever stop, we are having an active part in fracturing our own soul. Just take that in for a minute. It, it, so what you think you don't have time to stop doing is actually way more expensive to your life in the longevity of it if you don't. We take an active part in fracturing our own soul when we refuse to ever stop. Um, So we're doing a Sabbath Sunday as a church to help bring some focus and practice for what Sabbath can do in our life. Uh, Sunday services would typically, again, be a part of the Sabbath. Part of why we're taking next Sunday off from services is sort of a a real-life object lesson to help beginning practice Sabbath regularly uh, in our lives. So here's the practice for stop that I want to help you out with. Set a time to rest and develop a beginning and an ending sort of ritual for a Sabbath and try it out this weekend. Develop a beginning. It could be maybe, all right, we're starting Sabbath with a dinner with the biggest pazuki you have ever seen to end that dinner, and it's going to be delicious. And then an ending one, how are you going to to break the Sabbath? How are you going to end it? Maybe it's dinner again. Maybe it's a lighter meal. Maybe it's a get together, and it's like a New Year's Eve countdown. And, and you do it that way. Maybe it's a wrestling match in your living room with your kids or in the tr- whatever it is. But develop a beginning and an ending ritual um, in, in Sabbath. Amen? Next is rest. You don't just stop. You want to rest. We hear about Sabbath rest, and we imagine maybe sleeping in or taking the day off. Right? How many, when I hear rest, you, you think? Um, Sabbath rest is actually a form of uh, resistance. There's, there's, there's powerful forces, right, both external and internal, that war against a Sabbath sort of spirituality. And so to Sabbath will require that we resist. And so resting is, in this sense, for Sabbath's sake, is resisting. In part, we're resisting the push and pull of the world's pace of never stopping, never resting. Remember, so much of the gospel is counterintuitive, is countercultural. So in a world, how many of you have ever said these words to yourself, right? No days off. (laughs) Nobody cares. Work harder. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's great. I think that's that's a great message for the long haul of life. But in that, we've got to learn 
for our souls and for spiritual practices sake, how to rest. So here's what I would encourage you, the practice for rest, do this. Make a list of what you're not going to do on Sabbath. I'm not gonna answer work emails. Don't be lazy on Sabbath. This is not a lazy day. If you want a lazy day, take a lazy day. A Sabbath is not a lazy day. Um, a, a Sabbath is not a personal retreat day. Sabbath is a day of rest, is a day of stopping. So make a list of what you are not going to do on Sabbath next Sunday and explore maybe a, a prayer exercise for yourself. Maybe go pray in a new spot. Maybe pray for like five minutes at a time, 10 minutes at a time, whatever is fitting for you. But make a list of what you're not going to do, what you're going to rest. Because remember, God worked for six, then he rested on the seventh. So rest from something, but it is not a lazy day, all right? Amen? So delight. Next is delight. Sabbath is not meant to be a difficult day for obligatory religious duty, but a life-giving day of delight. It's like a weekly party. Who likes parties? I like parties. What if you got to design your own party? How would it look? We could do that. We can do that every week. It's, it's a full day set aside to celebrate our life with God in the world that he's created. We're not Sabbathing just as a break from Sunday service. We're, we're doing it in part to teach us all the importance of Sabbath and how to do it so you can incorporate it in your life as a whole moving forward, including Sunday services. Amen? It is designed to be done. Hear me on this one for sure. It is designed to be done in community. It is not a personal retreat day. So don't escape on Sabbath. Don't run away from all the troubles of your life on Sabbath. If you want to do that, do it on another day. <laughs> but Sabbath is designed to be done in community, not alone. So whether it's with your family in your house, whether it's with your extended family, whether it's with friends, whether it's with your small group, whatever that looks like, agree to it and, and kind of define the terms of it. If you're married, do it with, start with the, the family in your household, your spouse, if you have kids, great. If you're single, find community to do with it. Maybe your family lives in town. Maybe you have spiritual family or maybe you have adopted family. Maybe you have friends who are family. Sabbath in community. Don't escape during Sabbath. Delight during Sabbath. So a practice for delight is, is, again, don't Sabbath alone, Sabbath in community with your house, family, friends, friends, um, all that kinds of stuff. And, and pick some activities that are gonna bring some joy in your life. Maybe you're pickleballers. Go do a little pickleball during Sabbath. Um, it, whatever it is, find some. And then finally, worship. Sabbath isn't just a day to stop, rest, and throw a feast, although throw a feast makes Sabbath so much better. Ultimately, it's a holy day set apart for and dedicated to God himself. So again, next Sunday is not about taking the Sunday off. Next Sunday is about learning how to Sabbath as a church. Uh, early Christians called Sabbath the Lord's Day. It's a weekly day of worship by which we cultivate a spirit of worship all week long. So on our Sabbath Sunday, my encouragement is for all of us to choose a way to intentionally worship. Don't just take the day off from church and not think about God at all or not think about church at all or not think about this, but find a way to worship. The point of Sabbath is to dedicate the day to God, not to escape him because he is not a burden. But sometimes the mentality that we have just with church week after week after week after week, how many of you ever felt like, oh, geez, church is tomorrow? You can be honest. All right, two of you are on it. How many of you thought, oh, I gotta serve again? I've served so much. I've given so much Sundays where I'm not doing anything anyways. <laughs> it's crazy to me. I've given so many of my Sundays where I could be sleeping in bed enjoying me. I gotta be out there being selfless. <laughs> I've thought that. I've thought that. And what that signifies to me in my life is that I need a reset of my perspective for what church is. So this is an opportunity for that reset for all of us. It's not just about giving the Sunday off, although I'm sure you'll take it. <laughs> That's okay. But sometimes it's just a reset of what we think church is. So a practice for worship. Identify one way to deeply enjoy God next week. 
Take into consideration your personality, how you're wired, your, your stage of life, and learn to spend the day in worship. Learn how to deeply enjoy God when it is not provided for and catered to you. Learn a way to deeply, because we're, we're, again, we're here to be equipped, not to be, and, and I hope you hear my heart on this, we're here to be equipped not to be spoon-fed. The church staff and the servant leaders on Sunday are not here to be Christians for you, for your week. We're all here together to help equip each other Monday through Saturday and Monday all the way through Sunday. So find a way next, next Sunday during your Sabbath, during the 24-hour Sabbath period, to deeply enjoy God. And I want to end um, reading this scripture, and then we will be out of here. Mark 2, verse 27 and 28 says this. Then he said to them, these are Jesus' words, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord, even of the Sabbath. We talk a lot about lordship. Let the Son of Man, let Jesus be Lord of your Sabbath next week. Don't just escape it. Don't just take it as a week off, um, but take it as an opportunity to stop, to rest, to delight and to worship God. Amen?